Hey there guys, welcome back to our Medieval 2 Total War campaign as, da as uh, the Danish in Stainless Steel 6.4. In the last couple of episodes we've been slowly pushing our way through uh, what would be modern day Sweden here. And in this episode it looks like we're about to take the fight to the Norwegians who themselves have been claiming some territory around the uh, north up here. So whether or not they've taken this territory over here is yet to be seen, but I don't think they have. I think this is still rebel owned as there is a rebel uh, border with us up here. So hopefully we can catch the Norwegians uh, with their guards down considering that Oslo is almost pretty much completely... Uh, ungarrisoned with only three units so we may be able to take that very quickly before they can move their uh, sieging army or whatever army they're using to take uh, Oslo back and meet us in the battle as we don't have a full complement but we do have a 75% full army. Uh, in the Down here in the south we do have our diplomat moving towards the various nations of the world getting some trade agreements going so we will start off with getting a trade agreement with uh, Sicily here yes, and we will just offer them the trade agreement and they have accepted, which is good. So, the next uh, port of call looks like we'll have to move him back up north towards uh, whatever factions are down here. I know Venice probably owns most of this land here. But, uh... Well, the Byzantines will be down here as well. So, you know, we'll, we'll just move our, uh, our diplomat down there and see what we can do. Uh, up here in the north, our army is moving towards Oslo. It'll still take two turns before we can get there. Uh, we won't declare war until we're actually next to them and about to attack. And uh, down here, it looks like we still need to be recruiting some units. So I'll recruit another ship and another spear unit there. And it looks like we do have some more agents available. Uh, we did have our old agent, uh, the merchant, get lose this trade node, which was a very strong trade node. So we will get another merchant. And like I said, I'm not a big fan of using merchants in the older Total War games, but uh, I'll give it a shot. And we can also get a priest. I believe uh, we have a cardinal somewhere. He is. He's over yes. here. He's 52 years old. Uh, we might as well get another priest. And a spy, and we will send him sort of this direction. And we do have a rebel sediment up here that is very well garrisoned, or at least half garrisoned. Um, I imagine this settlement will be fairly safe though, so uh, I don't think we'll worry about that. And we are moving this general to Kalmar to garrison as the uh, garrison commander. So we'll end the turn here. And to be honest, I don't think Norway have much of a chance in our war. Uh, They've only got three territories compared to ours, and uh, we'll be able to take Oslo pretty much immediately if they don't move back a defending army. So yeah, the uh, campaign is going fairly well. Um, and I think uh, we're not really facing many threats yet, so once we do manage to take hold of all the north, it looks like our next target will probably be uh, the Holy Roman Empire or the British Isles. I haven't quite decided which one I'm going to uh, attack first. The Holy Roman Empire is going to be probably a little bit more interesting because that'll be a, um, a pretty tough one to take down. I know they hold a lot of territories and stainless steel adds a lot of holdings to them. So uh, that'll be a force to rec be reckoned with. But of course, the uh, uh, British Isles will also be interesting and probably very historically accurate that a Norwegian or Scandinavian force is landing troops in uh, Britain. And it looks like Norway has their diplomat at our uh, city gates, which I believe, if they don't actually engage in diplomacy, it means that they are preparing to attack us. And this looks like a high-ranking official. No so I'm not quite sure who that is, but he is a uh, six-star general. But again, that's not going to help him hold Oslo here. I have a feeling that they know we're coming, so we probably should move up, and I can't really see any enemy uh, armies up here, so I'm just going to move this unit around to make sure that I haven't missed anybody. And I think we're fairly safe to take Oslo. I can't really see um, a city with three garrison units, three spearmen, or two spearmen, and a Viking raider take on all these units down here. And it looks like I just missed that. Um... Norway do have an army in next to Skara. So that only has three units in it. Uh, they're not going to be able to take Skara with that. We have a defending unit and three spear militia. Uh, I'm going to recruit another two there. And of course we can't build anything until this settlement uh, gains the next population level, which will be at 2,000. It's gaining 2.5% per uh, turn. Yep. 
So I don't think they're going to be able to do anything with that. But we did miss them slipping south. So uh, again, all my cities are pretty much fairly well defended. I can't imagine they're going to be able to get any units there to attack them. But I will reinforce Lund because uh, that is sort of our frontier settlement. And there is actually a Norwegian uh, navy up here, which uh, our navy can definitely take on. So we'll go up there and attack them. Uh, or at least we will sit in here until the next turn when we do attack them. So uh, we'll end the turn again here. And we do have our diplomat moving north. Yes, we do. Okay. Just keep moving him. And, uh, yep, we'll, we'll end the turn. See what Norway does. I just imagine that Norway has a army somewhere around um, their lands because they were able to take Oslo. Um, and they, that's that's tiny little army that did is next to Scar at the moment isn't going to be able to do us any damage at all. Uh, a single defending garrison will be able to take care of them. So I'm not quite sure what they were planning. Uh, they might just be scouting the area, of course. But at least next turn, we'll know that we'll be able to take Oslo, or at least a turn after that, once we get our siege set up. And we will be able to take down that uh, navy, who I believe at the moment can't move at all because they are trapped in that little uh, river outlet. And we'll have to find another trade point for our merchant because our merchant, of course, um, was probably killed in that acquisition of our merchant um, point, which I think is kind of stupid. I don't know. He, he might have actually just been returned to one of the uh, cities. And it looks like Norway have uh, attacked us first. So I don't really know what they were thinking there. Um, I mean, they can assault if they want, but um, I'm pretty sure my garrison unit will be able to take care of them. I'm not going to bother taking back that army to try and... Um, lift that siege. I, I don't think, I think it's a bit of a waste of time. I will let him attack us. As we do have five units in that army. Um, we can move units up from Kalmar. In fact, I think I might do that. I'll move these three units up. And uh, we'll just sit here for now. And up here we will lay siege to Oslo. And we'll get a couple of siege rams and the ladders. I don't tend to really use the siege towers, but um, I think the ladders are good enough to get over the wall. So we'll maintain the siege there. We will take care of Admiral Gunnar. And we should be able to defeat them. Yes, we did. Okay, there we go. And we will return him to port so that we can uh, repair those ships. And of course, something that we're not really worried about is our money. We're just pulling in so much money already, so... Uh, I think we're good on that front. And down here, I might move up a couple of spear units to uh, Eskild here, who is going to be our reinforcing army at Skara. And hopefully they'll be able to get there in time um, before they assault. But even then, it's they've got a cavalry unit and probably a spear militia and uh, a viking raider, which we'll be able to take care of with five units. Hope at least. Um, and of course, they do move this cavalry unit down south as well, probably to reinforce Skara. So uh, we'll end the turn and see what happens. So at least things are getting interesting, but uh, I don't think Norway have much of a chance. Even if they take Skara, we'll be able to take it back the next turn. They're not going to be able to get out of the battle without uh, too many casualties, so... You know. And of course, the Holy Roman Empire is expanding south, probably, or towards Poland. Uh, we are allied with them, and uh, nothing's coming of that yet. But um, we'll probably have to break the alliance after we start clearing out the Norwegian territories. And... Um, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, we could do a, a, a naval assault on Scotland, actually, uh, take over the north half of the British Isles, and um, from there, probably launch a, launch a land invasion into uh, England. And, of course, the Norwegian diplomat is still down there, and it looks like Norway is moving their troops towards our capital. 
which is fairly interesting. And they, they've lifted the siege of Skara. So we will be able to move that uh, that army gar that army controlled by Eskild southwards, probably to ca take care of the small armies that Norway is sending. Okay, so the Pope is asking us to stop our war with the Norwegians, except that they attacked us, so I'm not going to do that. Orders, my lord. Uh, yes, lord. Unfortunately, I'm they're just out of range, and this city is barely garrisoned at all. And I can't get another unit over there either. So, um, there's not much we're going to be able to do about that. They might actually take Roskilde, which we will take back the next turn anyway, so it's not a big deal. Uh, we can send some of these units southward, but they're not going to get there in time anyway, so not going to worry about that. Up here in Oslo, it looks like we're about to assault, so we will uh, begin, the, uh, begin the battle. And, of course, it's saying that the power bar is not really in our favor all that much it is but not as much as it should be considering we have 2,000 men and they have 400 so I'm gonna quickly fight this battle out and you know we can move a lot of units onto the wall straight away because of those ladders that we built uh, probably didn't need three siege rams but I like to build quite a few in case they uh, catch on fire and you know so we'll uh, start the battle here, and we'll make sure to get all of our skirmish units off the siege equipment, and put them out at the front, and I think we, yeah, we've only got three archers, so that's kind of annoying, but that's not, not too much of a big deal. Uh, we will send our heavy, or our better troops onto the walls, um, so that they can get round and flank when we need them to, and we do have this spear unit on the siege ram already. And I'm sure we built some more ladders. Yeah, we did. So we'll get these ones over here to get onto uh, this wall up here. And we will move our archers along with the siege ram, just right next to them. And we'll start moving our troops into a column formation so that they can now uh, march to the gates. And it looks like the only cavalry we have are our general cavalry. We need to build some stables before we can get some uh, proper cavalry. So we'll send this ram up. And we'll start moving the ladders up as well. Of course, we'll move our archers into range. Uh, they do have some units on these walls. They are Viking Drenjar, which are just light infantry. I'm not quite sure if they are better than the Spear Militia. They probably will be better than the Spear Militia. Um, but at least they'll tie that unit up until we can get the, some men through the gates. Okay, so we'll just group these guys together. Let's move them a little bit closer. Alright, and these guys on the ladders are getting closer to the walls. These units over here are just spear militia, so uh, with two Viking Raiders we should be able to take these walls here. And, of course, we will get some fire on the uh, defenders with our archers here, who should start firing any second now. I think they can fire anyway. Yep, they can. So, I just want to make sure that they're not going to be hitting our guys climbing the, uh, the uh, walls here. So, I'm going to get them to target these guys over here. And, of course, this unit over here, who is a Norse archer, are uh, much better than the uh, Levy archers. So, these guys are still not in range. Okay, so it looks like we're pushing our men onto the walls. Uh, I don't expect these guys are going to win. Uh, in fact, I think we've already lost 20 men from that unit. So, it's really just to get these guys on the walls and to pin these guys down over here. Okay, so we should be able to take this, uh, this side of the wall, though. And uh, we'll get fire on these Viking Raiders down here. And we'll begin to move up our Spear Infantry to rush in as soon as those gates come down. Okay. 
And it's good we're stretching the defenders as thinly as possible. I probably could have moved a ladder somewhere over here as well. Um, but I tend to like assaulting from one side only. Even though it's probably more effective if I um, am pushing for multiple points because they've only got so many units to defend. Okay, so these are our units here. Our spear militia are getting... They're not doing too bad of a job, actually. Um, they're shaken, so they may break, um, but they're not doing too bad. And down here, it looks like these Viking Raiders are going to reinforce. No, they're not. Change their mind. Okay, and up here, we should be doing fairly well. I'm uh, not quite sure how many men were in this unit, but there was far more than 22. So we must have lost a lot of men getting up those walls. That's all good because the gates are at 78%, so we'll be able to push straight through soon. And it doesn't look like they've got anybody on the bottom floor defending except for these Viking Raiders, but uh, they don't really seem to know what they're doing. Okay, so our Spear Militia aren't actually doing as badly as I thought they might be doing. Uh, in fact, they're doing very well against the Viking Drenger. Okay, so it looks like we're through the gates, so I'm going to immediately push through and capture the walls. And my archers are running to get in range again, but I want to stop them from getting up those walls. The enemy's walls belong to us now. So I'm going to go straight up and attack these uh, these Viking Raiders here. And what we will do is get our archers inside the gates to about here. And it looks like they're going to one of the units is going to continue climbing the wall, but uh, the rest should move through the gate. Over here, uh, I'm not quite sure if we're winning. We're definitely sort of not really winning. Okay, we're not winning over here. But that's fine, because this spear unit's doing all right. And uh, we'll be able to push around and help these guys. Although, we have broken these guys. So. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. Okay, so we've got most of our archers down here on the uh, the main road and we are routing a lot of the Norwegian troops the enemy are badly bloodied they have lost half their men okay so we're gonna push up our general and uh, we might as well push these troops into the city as well can't imagine there's a problem not to uh, so we got a pretty uh, good melee going down here It's just these handful of troops that are holding us back. I'm not sure if that's the general unit. I don't think it is. Uh, it might be. So they're going to hold us until we can eventually just push through on sheer numbers. Even if they destroy two of our units, uh, we just th there's just too many of our men. So this Viking Drenja unit is still at full strength. Uh, not full strength, but they still have a lot of men. So hopefully we can keep our guys on the wall without breaking, but they are now shaken and very tired. Um, so, you know, not sure what might happen here. I will move up my general. He might be able to offer some, uh, offer some support in the city center. And, of course, we've got our archers inside the gates now. So we can get some uh, fire down on this unit of Viking Raiders and hopefully not get too many friendly fire casualties. Okay, so we just killed the enemy general. So I imagine he was part of this unit here. And they're routing now anyway. Um, so they'll route to the city center. And I will get my general to take them down because they're not a spear unit. So, you know. Um, but we've got a lot of congestion down here. So <laughs> the general's probably going to struggle getting through. Okay, so we've chased them to the city center, and uh, 
Looks like this battle will soon be ours. Uh, this spear militia is still holding up against these guys. Um, but, I mean, as soon as we take the city center, uh, the battle will be over. So, I just want to move my general back here so we can get some rear charges. That's not my general. Uh, where's my general? There he is. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. My lord, our men are in command of the castle. My lord, we have lost control of the castle. Okay, so we're just going to try and clear up these guys and then maintain control of the castle here. Uh, looks like our spear militia routed, unfortunately. But so is their uh, Viking Drenger. So we're going to turn around some spear units to clear those out so they don't get my archers. Alright, no need to. Alright, so we'll end the battle here. We lost 400 men, which is probably more than we should have. But uh, at least we took Oslo. Now the only thing we have to worry about is those Norwegian troops moving towards our capital. God has delivered us unto victory. Okay, we're going to occupy the settlement. God for this gift and we are pushing the Norwegians back. So they should only have two pieces of territory left now. Um, I don't think they took this one up here. So uh, we're going to see if we can retrain any of our units in this city. Which we can. Just not the ones that matter. Um, we can't retrain our Viking Raiders. Um, but that's fine. Okay. And we'll move Budel, or whatever his name is towards the Viking, uh, sorry, the Norwegian capital, and we'll just keep an eye on them. But down here, we do have sort of a problem. I don't imagine he can take Ross Guild with uh, one unit, but if he attacks with this guy here, uh, we're not going to be able to hold. But again, we'll be able to move a Skilled into an attacking position before they can uh, take over the city anyway. So uh, we'll end the turn here, or actually, we'll go check where our diplomat is. He should be close to the whole... Uh, Holy Roman Empire or the Byzantines? Question, my lord. At once. Uh, who are this? This is Nov Novgorod. Okay, so they're up north. So Go if I could, I could talk to her. Um, she might disappear at the end of this turn, though, so it doesn't really matter. Um, yep, so we'll end the turn there. Okay, so the war has turned into the favor of Denmark. And, of course, we'll probably be excommunicated by the Pope. Um... Which is kind of unfair considering they attacked us, but, you know. But uh, I like the Pope mechanic, at least. It's a little bit different and uh, adds sort of a new dynamic to the game. Um, I think uh, they did a lot of right things with Medieval 2. And of course, the Byzantines will probably be one of the late game powers. Um, they'll probably uh, boom out from Greece, wherever they are now. We bring you a okay, so Norway is asking for a ceasefire. And, uh, I mean, I could, but, I mean, we're so close to taking them. But, you know, I think if if we want to stay on the Pope's good side, I think we will we will accept the ceasefire because we now have Oslo and we can now take over the rest of Scandinavia and then once we've taken over the rest of Scandinavia, we can then uh, finish them off. So we will actually accept this. Many thanks. Okay. And we'll get some trade rights. Another course of wisdom to share. We have no complaints. Your time was and there we go. We thank you. So they're still moving their army through our uh, lands. So I'm going to just keep an eye on them to make sure that they're not planning on stabbing us in the back because I wouldn't put that past the Norwegians. Uh, not to say that Monday Norwegians like that, of course. Let's see. Down here, they do have a couple of armies moving through uh, Oslo territory. So they could be just planning on 
straight up attacking us again. Um, but we'll see what happens. So we're just going to follow them. And uh, I'm going to see if I can recruit some units here in Ahus and see if we can uh, repair our ships, of course. We do have a couple of ships that still need repairing. Okay. There we go. And I think we recruited a agent somewhere. Yep, okay, so we have a bishop here who is going to go to, let's see, Oslo up here. Needs converting, and in Roskilde we also hired a merchant who can uh, start acquiring florins from this honey over here. Now this Norwegian merchant was... Uh, in control of that trade node, but I don't know what really happened. We also have the ability to recruit Ballista now because I did build a... Uh, not quite sure what it's called, a Ballista something, Ballista Maker. So uh, there's not really much need for it, but we will recruit one, might as well. And of course we'll recruit as many spear units as we possibly can. Uh, we're not really at a shortage of money, so we can just keep spending if we need to. And we can hire more uh, agents, but you know what, I'm not really going to bother with that because we don't really need them at the moment, it's just more hassle. Uh, in Skara up here, we still can't do anything in Kalmar. We can build a stables, which I mean, we'll be able to get some cavalry to reinforce our armies, which would be nice, especially against those light infantry that seems to be all over, um, Scandinavian armies. And we'll grab a leather tanner as well. And it looks like we can recruit some decent units over here, so I'm going to go straight up and do that. Uh, we're going to be pushing towards Nykoping soon anyway. Um, probably just butchered that horribly, but Nykoping, I don't know. Uh, we'll grab some peasant infantry as well. And there is this little island over here, which I think is cool. So we will be build building up our fleet to make sure it's a full strength so that we can go and attack uh, that city there, of course. Over here, we just have a peasant army as the garrison and up in Oslo... Um, we're not really going to do anything, because if we attack, we're going to be breaking the ceasefire. So, hopefully, Norway is the one who gets excommunicated. And, in fact, I'm going to quickly look at the relationships. So, Kingdom of Denmark. His Holiness feels neither ill will or good towards Kingdom of Denmark. Uh, where's Norway? Where's the Norwegian flag there? Okay, so the Pope loves Norway, which is probably why he wanted us to stop fighting them. Um, hopefully, if they attack us... Yeah. Um, hopefully if they attack us, it means uh, the Pope will excommunicate them. Okay, so that Novgorodian princess disappeared. Uh, so I'm going to keep moving. This dip No, he didn't. Shit, I missed her. Okay. <laughs> Alright, doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to keep moving south anyway towards Greece and uh, the Byzantines. So we should be able to find a city of theirs somewhere around this area. Uh, let's see. It's not much more we can do this turn, so I'm going to end it. And we do have our spy moving further west, but it looks like um, Norway definitely is ramping up some for some sort of attack, which is kind of stabbing me in the back, considering I just accepted a ceasefire when I could have destroyed them completely. But uh, until we get the Pope's favour, not that the Pope matters really much when we're this far up, but... Uh, you know, it's nice to play within the sort of the realm of the uh, the game structure. So, but I think it'd be interesting if Norway attacks us because that'll put up a pretty uh, pretty good fight and a good reason for me to take over their lands early, because of course we plan on taking over uh, the rest of Sweden there and Finland, uh, which means we'll need to cross, of course, in. Uh, the ships that we built, so we are definitely going to be building a, uh, a bigger fleet, uh, which means that I'm also going to have to look at another city to see if I can build a port elsewhere. And down here, it looks like, of course, they're trying to acquire that merchant point again. And they succeeded again. And see, I just, I don't understand the whole merchant thing. It just, I whenever I try to do that, my merchant always dies, so... Um, it's just a pain, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's only something like 50 gold a turn, and we just made something like four grand. Um, we're going to make two and a half next turn, so. Okay, so new mission, take Rebel Sediment, Visby. 
and Visby is on this little island. So uh, we're definitely going to be doing that, but that's within 15 turns and we'll get an extra 2,000 Florence. So we'll, we'll go for that goal next instead of going for Ni uh, Nyko Ping over here. And up here in near Oslo, it looks like I am surrounded by Norwegian troops. And the Norwegian army that was marching around my lands has disappeared. Um, so I'm going to keep this army here in Roskilde. And I'm going to build our sieging army here in Kalmar. Because uh, Kalmar is offering us a lot of good troops. So uh, with that in mind, I think we're going to end the episode here. Um... Yeah, this sounds like this seems like a good place to end it. So uh, thanks for watching all the way through to here, guys. Uh, if you're enjoying the series, please leave a like and a comment. Uh, tell me what you think and uh, whether or not I should be going for Britain or maybe the Holy Roman Empire or perhaps something entirely different. Uh, and of course, subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks a lot, guys, and I'll see you later.